What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. This story's called Officer in an Airport. This didn't happen to me personally, but to a very close friend of mine on his way home to visit. My childhood best friend was coming home to visit from the military. He's stationed in San Diego. He had sent me a text message to inform me that they had gotten back from their five-month deployment, had gotten approved for leave time, and had just bought a plane ticket home and he would be coming home the next day. I just so happened to be home on leave myself, so he asked me to pick him up from the airport. My friend hadn't told his parents about the trip home as he wanted to surprise them. My friend took his first flight, if I remember correctly, to Chicago, where he had about a four-hour layover. Now, he wanted to surprise his family in uniform, so he decided to bring his recently pressed and cleaned dress whites in his travel garment bag. When he landed in Chicago, he knew he had time to kill, so he decided to get some lunch and find his gate so he would be ready for his next flight. He got himself comfortable at a seat by the gate and struck up conversation with the Marine who had just graduated boot camp from Paris Island and was on his way home to visit his family. Now, my friend has been in the Navy for about five and a half years and is a lieutenant, or O3. He asked what flight the Marine would be going on and found out that they were both catching a flight to Minnesota. After a short amount of time talking, my friend asked the young Marine if he would watch his belongings so he could get changed into his uniform. The Marine agreed and my friend got changed and quickly came back to his seat. As the flight approached, the flight attendants prepared to open the gate for passengers and my friend had gotten up and ready to board. Military, more often than not, gets to board before the other passengers so he stood close to the front of the line. He noticed a well-dressed man and who seemed to be his wife arguing with the flight attendants at the counter about the first-class seats that were available. There were three available and the couple wanted to catch an earlier flight. The attendant said that they had to wait until all the passengers scheduled on the flight were boarded, then they could give them the seats. The man became very angry and began to raise his voice to the attendant. After some back and forth arguing, the wife noticed my friend and immediately storms up to him. She says, Are you really going to let your flight attendants treat us like this? Do people know who we are? My friend was confused about why she was asking him considering he was wearing an all-white uniform and the pilots had a white top with black pants. My friend said, Ma'am, I can't help you. I'm not who you think I am. Ah, of course I know who you are. Do you think I'm stupid? It's your plane. You decide who boards. Ma'am, I'm not a pilot, and even if I was, I don't think that's how that works. Don't lie to me. I know you're a pilot. You're wearing the damn uniform. The things on your shoulders prove it. You can't trick me. These are shoulder boards, and it means I'm an officer. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm a pilot. At this point, the man at the counter finally gave up trying to argue with the flight attendants and noticed that his wife was arguing with my friend. He realizes that his wife has mistaken my friend for someone he's not and interjects into the conversation, attempting to calm his wife down. This is simply making her more irate as she now starts shouting obscenities at my friend. I don't know why you're getting angry at me. You initiated the conversation and made yourself look dumb. How dare you talk to me like that? I have been flying with this airline for 20 years. Bet your ass I'm going to tell your boss how you talk to me. We need to go now. No, frick you. I'm not letting this freaking punk talk down to me. What's your boss's name? I want to know right now. My friend doesn't hesitate to pull out a skipper's contact card and says, here's the number to his office. Tell him Lieutenant OP's friend says hello. By this point, she had her phone out and was dialing the number when security showed up. Security told my friend to go ahead and board so he would not miss his flight. As he walks up to the counter, the flight attendant says to him that they decided to upgrade his flight to first class, free of charge. My friend asked if they could do the same for the young Marine that was boarding with him. The attendant agreed and announced on the intercom to thank them for their service and congratulate them on the upgrade to first class. My friend told me the look on the woman's face was priceless as she walked through the gate. Instant karma for a horrible woman. Okay, honestly, if there's military service members on a flight and there are available first class seats, automatic upgrade, come on. And if you're worried that my system is flawed, because there might be more service members than there are seats, and oh my god, there's not enough seats, what are we gonna do? It's not fair, how are we gonna decide who gets what seat? It's simple, okay? 
It's first come, first serve. If you're first in line, you get the pick of the... of the pick. <laughs> this story's called $15,000 Instant Karma. Hi! Someone said this belonged here because I technically do not work for the department store that my shop rents out space in. The other day, these two older European women came into my section of the department store I work in and brought up a coat from a different part of the store, asking me to price check it for discounts. I kindly explained that I can't be sure of the price if there's discounts on it, since my section of the store isn't actually working for the store. We just rent out space in it, so I can't be sure of any deals they have if they aren't in the system. I then told them they can go to the main service desk, less than 20 feet away from my section, and they can give the most accurate price. They immediately got very angry calling me stupid, screaming at me, and saying I didn't know how to do my job. I spent 10 minutes explaining in every way I knew how that I can't be sure if there aren't any discounts on it because we are a separate store, just located inside of the department store. So I slash everyone that works there doesn't have knowledge of all the sales going on for other sections because we don't need to. They continue to refuse to walk the few feet to the service desk again and again and the one doing most of the talking or yelling through, yes, overhand through, the heavy-ass coat at my stomach, and told me to hold it for her, then walked away. I stuck the coat on a rack next to our station, because this coat wasn't our merchandise and I didn't give a crap what happened to it after that. They then proceeded to come back 30 minutes later after wandering around the store, and the one that threw the coat at me was screaming and crying freaking out saying that she lost her 24 karat solid gold diamond ring in our store. I noticed the ring the first time I saw her. It was a huge rock. She started screaming for me to please look for it because it's worth $15,000. It's her prized possession, etc. I glanced around and said, I'm sorry, but I have no idea where it is and haven't seen it. She told me it was my fault she lost it, and then her and her benchy sidekick literally ran around the store for five hours and never found it. It's been almost a week and I asked the general manager of the department store if they found it. And nope, it's gone. <laughs> this story's called Similar Logo Does Not Equal Employee. I'm a nurse surgeon's assistant. Long story short, I'm a nurse that participates in patient care from the preoperative units, assists in the procedure throughout surgery, and continues to be involved in their care until they leave post-anesthesia recovery. Unlike most of us, I don't work with any particular surgeon or specialty. I'm in the surgical float pool. On this day, I was visiting our sister hospital on behalf of a cardiovascular surgeon to help plan a patient's transfer to our hospital and procedure, which was a major cardiovascular surgery. All notes, I was wearing scrubs, my ID badge, and a jacket from my home hospital. The logos for both hospitals are similar. My home hospital was Redacted Medical Center at Major City. The hospital I was visiting was Redacted Hospital University Co-op Medical Center at Smaller City. Completely different facilities, different names, etc. I was walking through this hospital trying to find the unit the patient was in, and I'm stopped by an old lady asking where the emergency department is. I didn't work there, however, I did know where the emergency department was, so I gave the directions I knew. I had my meetings, met the patients, collected the information I needed, etc. So I decide to head to the cafeteria, grab some food, and leave. On my way leaving, I'm approached by the same old lady, now in a patient gown, asking where the neonatal intensive care unit is. I don't know, I'm not even sure if the hospital had a neonatal intensive care unit. I direct the person to the information desk on that floor with the intent of getting the hell out of the building and eating my carryouts in the car. She decides to follow me. And about halfway to the parking garage, she starts screaming about how unhelpful I am. I try explaining to her that I don't even work there, but she starts yelling about me being a liar because my ID says I do. I show her that my ID literally says that I work at the redacted hospital at Major City, not the facility we were at. I was about to walk away, but she takes my food from me and throws it. Now I'm mad. I put my serious face on and tell her, essentially, to step off and leave. On the way out, I'm stopped by security to which I gave a statement, got laughed at, which made me even more pissed, and by the time I got back to my hospital, 
The cardiovascular surgeon I made the run for had heard of the event. Okay, I understand that this subreddit exists solely because people don't ever believe anybody for some reason when they say that they don't work at a certain place, but I'm just baffled as to why they never believe them. In the case of this patient, I can actually kind of understand because, you know, when you're visiting a hospital and you're not necessarily familiar with hospitals, nurse equals nurse. You don't understand the differences. At least this is from a perspective of someone who never really goes to hospitals that often. So if I see scrubs, it's just nurse. And I understand there's nuance to it. You know, there's different types of nurses as mentioned here. And this woman probably just assumed this nurse was just trying to get out of doing her job, which is very common with lazy people. So my point is, it's helpful to assume a perspective of ignorance, you know what I mean? Obviously, I'm not saying to be ignorant, I'm just saying stupid people are stupid. <laughs> they don't know any better. But again, in this Redditor's defense, there's not much else she could have done to explain that she didn't work there. So I guess it comes down to the patient to not be a stupid jerk. Alright, this story's called Stir Fry Sauce. Hello everyone, Longtime Lurker here. I was amazed when I came across this subreddit. Finally, I have a story to share that fits perfectly. Please forgive spelling and grammar. I have some neurological issues and can get a bit wonky. It's okay. This happened a good decade ago now, when I was about 20. But you know how some memories stand out so vividly? This is definitely one of those times. I was a newly graduated veterinary nurse working in a busy little small animal clinic based in a well-known horse racing town. On that particular day, we'd had a high volume of surgeries and I just spent a good six hours solid doing anesthetics. Hunched up and concentrating hard and was so very ready to stretch my legs and eat an overdue lunch. We finally wrap up the last surgery. All went well, no animals were harmed in the making of this story. I am very ready to devour calories. Now, usually, whenever I left the clinic, I would change my nurse's tunic for something more casual. But as we'd been busy and I was two hours past my usual lunchtime, I didn't bother to change. And in fact, hadn't even de-accessorized. So I had a full bottle green tunic and trousers, fob watch, name badge with job title, and to top it all off, a stethoscope round my neck. Full on knackered nurse chic. I was in a rush to get my coveted sandwich, damn it. Point is, everything about my look screamed medical worker. I decided to pop into the local Marks and Spencers and get a nice sandwich. Anyone from outside the UK, Marks and Spencers is a department store that is fairly fancy, not super duper posh, but not exactly an everyday shop either. This branch was a clothes store up front with a food section at back. Getting lunch from here was a special treat. So I get to Marks and Spencers, have picked myself a drool-worthy sandwich, ham hock and chutney, <laughs> yum, and have decided, hell with it, I'ma get me a dessert too. In for a penny, in for a pound. I trotted to the fresh cake section and am salivating over cheesecakes and macaroons when along comes Karen. I know that's a cliche at this point, but seriously, this woman was the most Karen Karen to ever Karen. From the, I need to speak to your manager, haircut, to the Audi car keys on the Kath Kidston key ring clutched in her bejeweled claws. Karen stops right next to me, stares at me with eyebrows raised, then sort of huff sighs through flared nostrils in my direction. I assume she wants something I'm standing in front of, so I just shuffle along a bit and keep contemplating cakes. Mmm, cake. Don't you dare walk away from me! Pardon? Where are the stir fry sauces? She clicks her fingers up near my face as she says this. Stir? Fry? Sauces? At this point, I didn't twig she thought I worked there, as I'm wearing a name badge with Vet Clinic on it and knew I was representing my workplace, so I try to be polite, rather than just scoff in her rude face. Mistake. Oh, I have no idea. Maybe on the end of the veg aisle? Like with the packaged salads and stuff? Alarming screeching begins. What do you mean you have no idea? This is ridiculous! You should know where all products are. How could you be so rude and stupid? The irony. Me, confused still, hungry, just want to eat my damn lunch. I don't know where your sauces are. I don't come in here much. Excuse me, and I start walking away. Karen puts her arm out, blocking my escape. 
I can't believe this, you rude child. They will hire anyone these days. This shop is supposed to have standards. I don't care if this is into your apartment. You should know this shop layout is basic knowledge. Did you even listen during training? Who's your manager? All said in one enormous breath. Kinda impressive. Me? Bewildered? Still hungry? Really struggling to connect that she actually thinks I work there? I... don't work here. Gesturing with sandwich at uniform. Karen, with an even higher level of screeching, dogs back at the clinic lightly start howling in response, face alarmingly red. Don't get cocky with me! Tell me where the stir fry sauces are right now! You are going to be in so much trouble, young lady! You might even be fired for your cheek! So done at this point, stomach growling, sandwich calling. I don't work here. I'm a veterinary nurse. I'm buying my lunch here. Please move. Uh, Karen's gears start turning, eyes roaming nursey evidence. Ah, uh, uh, I should have known you from... Name of horse clinic, not the vets I work at. They always have silly little girls working there. Look at all the horse hair you're sprinkling around the place. They shouldn't have let you in. It's not sanitary. I'm telling the manager you'll be banned. FYI, my tunic was spotless as I'd been wearing scrubs over it all day. But sure, okay, Karen. Thank the lunch gods, Karen decided to then storm off. I assumed to find a manager to scream at for a few hours. I grabbed a custard tart, double pack, and you're damn right I ate them both, and purchased my lunch. I never saw Karen again, so for all I know, she's still there, shouting about rude stable girls who don't know where stir-fry sauces are. The sandwich was delightful. Okay, I know, we all agree the Karen was a ding-dingle word. But can I talk about sandwiches for a second? I am a huge believer that sandwiches are one of the best methods of eating food. I will take a good sandwich over any meal, ever. Okay, I'll take that back. Okay, so it's either sandwich, pie, or the halal guys. I'm really good at making good sandwiches and really good sauces for those sandwiches, so um, yeah, I, I'm big on those. Also, let me say this, if you're near Manhattan, or you can go there, or if you're in Houston, I don't know where else they are, but please check out the Halal guys, they are so good. Get just, um, get a platter with rice, um, the gyro meats, I call it gyro, shoot me, um, and chicken with naan, no tomatoes, the tomatoes are so bad for some reason, and get some white sauce, the white sauce is so good, um, the red sauce is really spicy, so go easy on it if you can't handle it. I take two packs, that's because I'm badass. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.